Okay, so I'm not trying to say this is like a best practice or anything, but if you ever want to like make a little level in Blender, I don't know, I'm just making like a little example level, then uh, this is, um, I think I just found a good way to do it. So uh, let me see. So uh, I'll just add some stuff real quick, just to like show you, just like add a new object. So a little mesh. So bring it over here, you know, like make like a little level and stuff. I ha and then like uh, you could just like edit that like new thing you made. So when you go into the faces mode, so I have it where you can select like faces and vertices. So then like you could just like move it around like this, make some like weird types of shapes, have it go like that or something. I don't know, like whatever you want. So just some weird shit. So this is something you just cannot do in a grid map, but you could do in this. So you can give it like some weird stuff. Hell yeah. So boom, like move this out. Yeah have some fun with it you know so um okay so after you're done like making all your changes then you can just export as a GLTF 2.0 and then I use a GLTF embedded I here's my includes I don't I didn't check anything I have plus Y up I have like UVs normals vertex colors materials checked no compression and uh, animation doesn't matter because nothing's really animated this is just the static level Everything on top of it, like, oh, everything that's going to be dynamic will be built in Godot itself. Yeah. So I might, like, if, it's there, if there's a door or something, I might just, like, leave a little empty hole in this level. But yeah. So I'm exploring it. So right here, uh, I have it right here to where you could, uh, to where it's export. So that's a GLTF file. What I do every time is I just delete all this, put this in, go into Godot. And then, uh, yeah, there's some, like, dependency problems because I just got rid of everything. Okay, so I go into that GLTF. I open it. Okay, so right here, you can see that that change was made. I have that weird-ass mesh. But yeah, so you could, like, you saw how quick that was. That was just, like, a couple minutes. And then, um, okay, so what I do is I made a little script right here. I'll go over the script in a second, but I'll just add it to the level. Okay, so that's the script. And then I'm going to save it as a scene. And then um, I have this um, one of my levels. Let me see. So I go to scenes, my levels. I have this level that I call skater grounds. And yeah. So it's already loaded. It, has, it loads the level in here. So it's just looking for the level 00, zero underscore A. And uh, yeah. So that level's already loaded into this one. And I'm just going to play it. So notice that I put that script in there. So I'm gonna play this. Go into Skitter Grounds. And it's already all loaded up. If you notice, I did not put any collision shapes in. But it's already colliding. So yeah. So that's what's nice about this one. See it's flowing in midair. I didn't really do that much testing. I'm able to move up like it's a slope. And it, yeah, it's just like a weird type of like uh, level. So you can pretty much do anything with this. This is way better than grid maps in my opinion. Because grid maps are really blocky unless you want that type of functionality for your game. But yeah, but right here, I got it done. So okay, so I'm going to go into the script and go over what it does. So here's what the script does. It basically uh, goes through all your children. So basically all the meshes that are connected into here. And then it puts them into an array. It just like gets all the children puts them into a array and then uh, these are all the collision layers and uh, I just activate 1, 5, and 6 because those are the ones I use for bullets or enemy projectiles I just want to make sure they're able to actually hit the level so yeah okay so right here I get all the children put them into that that variable and then um, if I go through each child or each node like uh, in that array Okay, so first off, I check if it's a mesh instance, and then I uh, if the uh, only has like basically if it has no children, then I create a tri mesh collision. Otherwise, like it, maybe if I wanted to do it like before the editor loads, and yeah. So after generating the tri mesh static collision, then I'm gonna like try and find the child of each mesh if there is a child, and uh, the first thing I check is that if the first um, child of a mesh is a static body and I just give the static body to the child variable. So if the first uh, child of each mesh is not a static body then I'll loop through and check all the children of each mesh and then check for that static body. Otherwise if there is none then I'll just leave the child a null 
because we have not been able to find one and we cannot change the collision layer and the collision mask. But this is just my attempt to make it a little bit more error prone. So uh, yeah, so if it's like the final pass for a level and I want to add some more stuff, then I, I don't want it to like crash because I can't find a static body where I'm trying to change a collision layer of like a sprite or something. So down here in this for loop, I go through uh, all the bits, all the bit layers that I'm changing to true, and then I'm sending them all to like true basically. And it just goes through each one, one, five, and six, and sets each collision layer and mask to true. So, but zero by default is true, so the bit zero is true. So I don't need to edit that one, I just need to edit one, five, and six, because those are like, like projectile layers, enemy layers, all that. It's like, a lot of stuff is on different layers. So that basically makes it to where I could just like plug in a level like that. You saw how fast it was. I'll go over it again, I'll say hey, another thing. So uh, let me see. So I'll just like duplicate this thing, move it over here, maybe change it around a bit. And then uh, let me see, I'll go into object edit mode. Whoops. You need to deselect everything when you copy it. Okay. So I'll just like go crazy with it and move it all the way up here like that. It's it's all weird now. But yeah. Boom! Oh, you know what the hell I just did right there? I accidentally clicked some, but still, it is applying. So, okay. So now I'm done with that. I'm going to save it, export it as a GLTF, copy it, paste it, whoops, paste it. Okay, now I'll go to this. Go over here, open anyway, and as you can see, you just it's always good to check for the mesh to see if it was already added there. And here you go, I will add that script, and now I'll play it. Oh, wait, whoops, I forgot to save it. Sorry, I need to save the scene as that and then boom now I can play it okay see that one was already added it's that fast you could literally iterate that fast it's so nice I, I was just like flabbergasted when I figured this shit out yeah it's so cool it's like really really nice and uh, everything's all ready there it's already colliding with everything so like I said this probably isn't the best way to do it but Man, this is actually pretty freaking cool. I, I just can't believe it. Like, uh, I've been trying to make like a little level editor that's a little bit better than grid maps. I want to make some weird shapes, and that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Make some weird ass mo fucking shapes. Hell yeah, look at that. Right here, I even made like some stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I'm not doing any texture work on them, but y you can do all the texture work in Blender. As you see, I put one texture right there and another texture, so that's just like the same mesh with two different textures. And that's what's nice about it, because like in Blender, you can like mix different textures in it. And bam! So I hope this helps, and I hope you all have a great motherfucking day.